All right, so this is the umpteenth episode on my 4G63 Subaru 360 front suspension upgrade. It's uh, been a bit of a trial and error and caused me pause to wrap my head around what I'm doing here. So uh, last time I left off, we had the spindles flipped around the other way. Um, basically a rear steer with the stock Subaru 360 front rack and pinion and I had fabricated these kind of hokey brackets to try to get my angles right and realize that I can't just adapt something to make it fit I gotta follow some rules been doing some reading and some studying and my angles were all wrong uh, for example do you see how this tire here is tipped out Quite a bit and this one not so much you look at them both you can see that one on the, the left there is quite a bit tipped out that's called Ackerman's angle or Ackerman's principle and that wasn't happening at all with the way it was before the problem with the uh, steering is this rack is set up to be rear steer so when I turn the steering wheel left it actually turns the car right but I'm working on that I've pretty much come to the conclusion that I've got to have my tie rods in the front like this. And uh, speaking of tie rods, you can notice here I've got these big wheels on here. These are 16 inch stock Eclipse Talon wheels. I had to modify the Mustang hubs to allow, the, it's the same bolt pattern, but the hub was too small, too large on the Mustang, so I had to machine that down. Now I just realized that the thread pitch is wrong so I'm gonna have to put different wheel studs in it's all these little things that really get you so now I've got my Ackerman's angle the way I want it I'll show you I'll spin this over to the side so that's full lock to the left if you're sitting in the car and see how this is quite a bit further out that's what you want that's actually a little too much I've got a little too much caster on that right now and I've also realized through my control arms here my control arms are actually like this, where the upper control arm goes down to the ball joint or the wheel, and it needs to be the opposite way. So I've got to make some adjustments here and go back and actually lower my um, caster point so that my control arm goes down so that I don't have a problem when I'm steering. It keeps the rubber to the road, as they say. So, uh, yeah, I've got the big wheels on there. They're not really big they match the rear and ultimately that, that's what the car is going to get the 14 inch wheels which I had on there prior are definitely smaller but I couldn't get my tie rod on the bottom I'd have to mount it to the top and that would throw my angle all off create bump steer and some other issues so a lot of engineering goes into this you can't just throw a front end together as I am quickly realizing and move this back again I've got Monte Carlo, Chevrolet Monte Carlo calipers, and there's plenty of room for them to clear back there. I could probably step down to 15 inch wheels once I'm done, and that's probably what I'd like to do. I want to keep the wheels as small as possible. I think it looks kind of funky with great big huge wheels on this little tiny car. So that's where we are tonight. I'm working with ironing out all the little bugs. I've got to make a new lower cross member and I've got to adjust those control arms down and I've got to find a rack. I might go with a, a Mustang 2 rack which the input is on the bottom which turns the wheels the opposite way which is what I want. That's going to require a whole bunch of fabrication. I may just figure out a way to gear this like an oil pump. You know how the center would turn one way and the outside would basically be like a planetary gear and turn the other way. Hmm, I'm thinking about that. So off I go, do some more thinking. Just wanted to give everybody a status report on the 4G63 Monster Subaru 360. It hasn't fallen by the wayside, but it is making my hair turn a little gray. Thanks for watching, subscribing, liking, and commenting. Have a great day.